Hello everyone, I'm Francois from Shackmat. In this new video, we will have a look to the Clockapound MK2, which is a new version of our clock sourcing device. The Clockapound MK2 has four different outputs. First output is the clock output, which is processed by the groove and humanize functions. Second output is the accent output. This output is also affected by the groove and humanize and is providing different accent patterns. Third output is a 16 output, which is not modified by the groove and humanize. Then you got a reset output and you have a MIDI input in order to sync the clock upon with different MIDI devices. The transport section of the clock upon MK2 has five different buttons. The first one is a play pause button. Let's pause the sequence and repress on play. Now you have the stop button. Of course, you can press play after a stop. But what's the difference between a stop and a pause? After a stop, pressing play will cause a reset output to deliver a trigger reset, and all the accent and micro timing patterns defining the grooves will be resetted. This is not the case when pressing play after a pause. Let's repress play. Now the manual reset that you can achieve by pressing stop and play at the same time. Now you have the tap tempo that you achieve by pressing the function button along the play button. Finally, the next and previous buttons will act as a nudge. So nudge means you can speed up or lower a bit the BPM a bit in the way DJs would work with vinyl player in order to resync two tracks together. Until now we were in transport mode. Let's go through our menu to change different parameters in order to navigate through the different pages of the menu. Just press the function button along the next or previous buttons. And when you are on the page you want to edit, just use the next and previous button alone. So first page of the menu is the BPM page. In this page, we can of course manually edit the BPM. With the tap tempo, these are the two ways to define your BPM. The BPM can go from 30 to 300 BPM. By scrolling the BPM down to 30, you will now find the MIDI mode which will sync the clock upon to the incoming MIDI clock. A new feature of this clock upon MK2 is the grooves. Grooves are a pattern of microtiming affecting the groove and accent output. Adding groove to your clock will add some very peculiar rhythmic feeling to your compositions. To use the grooves, first go to the second page of the menu, which is the Groove Type menu. In this page, you can define the groove you want to apply to the clock. The first display shows the time signature of the bar used for the groove and accents. So here we have 4-4 four, four based grooves and accent patterns. Actually, you have a lot of different grooves in 4-4. Four, four. Then you get the 5-4, technically 10-8 time signature, 6-4, 12-8 time signature grooves, 7-4 filling and 9-4 filling. Let's go first with the 4-4 time signature grooves. Once you set a groove type, you have to go to the third page, which is the groove amount page. This will define by percent how much the groove will affect the clock. Let's start the sequence. The first groove we are checking at is the 4-SG, so 4-4 time signature SG stands for swing. And let's go to the third page and raise the groove amount. So this 
classic swing is what we found usually in the old school drum machines where we're dealing the even pulses. Of course, we can apply more subtly this groove by reducing the groove amount. Let's now try a different swing, for example, the swing inverted. With the swing inverted, the even pulses are anticipated and not delayed. Third groove is a swing alternate. This one is a ternary feeling, so on a group of four, you're pushing pulses number two and three on triplets, as the fourth pulse is pushed on the last sextale of a beat. Let's quickly listen to different grooves. Decelerando, accelerando, and accelerando, decelerando. P1, P2, P3 and P4 are different groove patterns inspired by hip-hop track we like. And of course, again, we don't have to apply the grooves with 100% to have more subtle results. Let's now have a look to the accent page of this menu where you can select an accent pattern. Again, you have to keep in mind the accent output will follow the same microtiming as the clock output. So for example, if a pulse needs to occur for a certain pattern on the accent output and the clock output provides an anticipated pulse, the accent pulse will also be anticipated. To select an accent pattern, just go on the fourth page of the menu. Again, the selected groove will lead to a certain time signature and you won't have the same accent list for the 4-4 time signature than for the 5-4 time signature, which will also be different from the one you're going to find in the other time signatures. So let's check the list of the accent patterns for the 4-4 time signature. First is bar, which will provide a trigger every bar, half, fourth, so a trigger every beat, eighth, after beat, so it will be on beat number two and four of a four four bar, counter beat, which is pretty handy to accentuate your hi-hats in house or techno music, and syncopation, syncopation with reset and half tempo syncopation and then you go back to the bar. Let's now go to a 6-4 type of groove. Bar, half, fourth, eight, three, four triplets. As you can see, the accent patterns are different for this different time signature. The clock upon also has a humanized feature which will add randomness to the timing of your clock signal. So let's start first a beat and let's go to the fifth page of the menu Humanize where you can set in percent a certain amount of Humanize. At low Humanize amount it is very subtle. As the Humanize amount is going up you can hear the randomization is less and less subtle. At 40, 50, clearly, I think your drummer is now a bit drunk. Humanization amount upper to 50 will give more a feeling of randomization than humanization. At 80, the drummer really lost his sense of rhythm. And now, around 100, we are more into experimental timing territories. After the humanized page, 
you can now go into the option menu where you can find different settings to customize your model. On those pages, the menu LEDs are blinking. You can find the reset option, the delay first clock option, the 16th output options, the tap tempo options, and then the select bus activation. Let's go back to the first page, reset options, where you can set when the reset trigger is emitted. So basically, normally the module will provide a reset trigger at play, but you can also decide to have a reset at play and for example, every bar. As you can see on the reset LED, every bar, every two bars, every four bars, every eight bars. Using a reset every bar or every two bar, four bar or eight bars is pretty handy when you're using word time signatures and you want your sequencer to follow and to be resetted every X bar of this peculiar time signature. Next on the reset list is PS. So in this case, the reset output will provide a reset trigger at play or at stop. Of course, you can have reset at play, stop every bar, every two bars, every four bars, and every eight bars. Next page is the reset first clock. In this page, you can delay the clock trigger, which is emitted at the same time as the reset trigger. And this is the case for reset trigger emitted at play or every X bar. Available delay times are 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or 6 milliseconds. This feature comes from the fact not all the sequencers are understanding a reset trigger the same way. So sometimes, by delaying a bit the first clock, you will help all the different sequencers to start in sync on the first step. Let's go to the next menu, 16 don't stop. You can activate the fact that the 16 output won't stop when you're pressing stop. Why would you do that? Because sometimes you want to keep some LFOs or pingable delays, any clockable modules which is not providing a sequence to still be running even while you are stopping. Note. In MIDI mode, you need to have your MIDI device still sending a MIDI clock while being stopped. This is not the case for all the MIDI devices, so you should be aware of, and if this is the case, don't forget to enable this option on your MIDI device. Next page is the tap tempo option. In this page, you will define the number of tap the module needs to calculate the tap tempo. At low values like to your BPM will be quickly calculated, but with more taps, the BPM will be more unstable. Note by default, we suggesting to use four taps, which means you need a full bar to tap your tempo. It is possible to set this value up to eight, meaning it will be pretty slow to tap the tempo, but the BPM value will be much more stable. Last page is the select bus page. This is where you enable or disable the fact the clock upon MK2 will react to select bus messages. The clock upon MK2 has a non-volatile memory of 16 memory slots. When saving or loading a slot, you're saving the BPM, the groove type, the groove amount, the accent pattern, the humanize amount, the reset options, the delay first clock options, the 16th clock option, and the tap tempo option. Now the select bus option is more a general behavior of the module and is not stored per memory slot. Let's now store a preset. To do so, let's hold the stop button and the save button at the same time. Let's now choose a certain slot with the next and previous buttons. Let's say we want to store this preset on the slot number four. Let's now repress the stop button and save button at the same time. Let's now edit different settings of our clock upon. Let's now reload the preset we made earlier. So let's press the stop button and the load button at the same time. You can navigate through all the presets with the next and previous buttons. 
and confirm loading your preset by pressing stop and the load button at the same time. You now have back all the settings you stored on the preset number 4. The clock upon MK2 handles the select bus protocol. This protocol allows to send and receive load or store messages through the power bus. So let's first activate the reception of select bus messages on the clock upon MK2 and let's configure the Arlequin's context to transmit select bus messages. So we're gonna now create a preset on the clock upon. So let's create first a preset on the clock upon with certain BPM, groove amount and so on. Actually every page is just the select bus reception is not a per preset parameter. And so let's store this as a preset, but this time this will be the Arlequin's context that will send a store message through the select bus. Let's store this on scene number one. Let's create now a second preset. Let's edit several menu pages in the clock upon. And now we're gonna store this preset on scene number two, slot number two in the clock upon. By default, the clock upon MK2 has its transport section enabled when synced to an external MIDI device. But in some configurations, it might be interesting to turn this transport section off. If you want to disable the transport section in MIDI mode, start up the module while holding the stop button. As you can see, the display shows on. If you want to go to off, just press the function button. To confirm your choice and exit this menu, press play. Or if you want to simply exit without changing the fact the transport section might be disabled in MIDI mode, just press stop. Thanks for watching and see you soon. Bye bye.